Road Trip by Shadow Dog Productions. Call and Buster, as I live and breathe. Want some coffee? Uh, that depends on how pissed Tiger is. He was pretty hot when I gave him the news. He smashed Voyager. Oh, crap. Tiger was a rabid model shipbuilder who'd been working on the Voyager model for six weeks. <sighs> Maybe we should come back later. Carl and Buster turned to the door. House got up from his seat next to the door and blocked it. House was quite capable of blocking the entire door by himself because his nickname did not come because he looked anything like Hugh Laurie. Or we can wait to see Tiger. Yeah, that works too. Good idea. You boys need to make this right with Tiger now before things get out of hand. It wasn't my fault. (laughs) Oh, shit. Shut up. Save that nonsense for Tiger. For now, coffee? Uh, No, thanks. I'll take one of those fudge cookies, though. Lila slapped his hand, hard. Did I offer you one of those cookies? Ah, uh, damn. No, ma'am. My bad. My mother made these special for my birthday. I'm not sharing them with you until I see which door you come out of. If you walk out this door, you can have a cookie. If you push through the doggy door behind Tiger's desk in Little Baggies, then I have wasted a cookie on you, right? Waste not, want not. Um... Right. Well, at least he's in a good mood. I mean, the Lakers are good again this year, right? <clears throat> Actually, that crap. Got blown out at home last night by the Clippers. Ah, oh, crap. We're dead. Hence, your cookie probation. Carl and Buster looked longingly towards the door again, but stopped when House glared. Ah, oh, that's Tiger. Go on in. Thanks, Lila. See you in a couple minutes. Hmm, Maybe. Inside, Tiger was sweeping up the wreckage of a shattered model ship that looked like it had been crushed by a concrete mixer. Have a seat, boys. Carl and Buster looked at the two guest chairs, which were for the first time sitting on plastic tarp. Hey, listen, I can explain. Sit. Down. Carl and Buster sat. Carl looked nervously at the stack of garbage bags next to Tiger's doggy door behind his desk. My sources confirmed a couple of minutes ago that Bunny is in witness protection now, which means my brother's going away to prison for a long time. We're so sorry. You got a mouse in your pocket, son? Uh, no. Then what's this wee crap? I, I, I just meant Buster and myself. Buster, does this man speak for you? No, sir. Is he your lawyer, maybe? No, sir. Well, maybe he's your daddy. No way, sir. Okay, so anyway, perhaps the two of you can explain how Bunny got away from you. Well, she, you know, pocket-dialed the police while we were hustling her out of the club. It still would have been okay. We'd have gotten her out to the car in time, but stupid bouncer saw us being rough with her. Yeah, by the time we beat him up and stuffed him in the trash can next to the door, the cops were already there. Bunny ran over to them, and we had to bounce. She pocket-dialed the cops, huh? Yeah, you know, it's this thing where you dial yourself from inside your pocket. I know what it means. Oh, sorry. Now, here's a steel shot from the security footage at the club. Yep, there's the bouncer we had to beat up just ahead of us, right there. Yeah, I like that little look of fear inside. See that? Man, you see the back of my head in this shot right here? See, I told you my fade was tight. Crazy, Carl. All right, back on point, man. Uh, Yes, sir. Uh, Sorry, sir. What's Bunny wearing in this photo? You know, a skirt, a blouse, and those cute little you red pumps. You see any pockets, son? Oh, well, that was an, an expression. Yeah, well, I mean, specifically, she purse-dialed, I guess. I, I don't know. You let her keep her purse? Well, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it happened really fast, sir. We were going to take it away from her once we got her to the parking lot. You know, you, you can't be carrying a woman's purse in the club, <laughs> sir. <laughs> you can't be carrying a woman's purse in a club. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I like that. Yeah, I mean, they take away your man. Shut crying. up. Sorry. You know, my wife thinks I should buy a Venus flytrap so I can spend the next month feeding the two of you to it. Ah, oh, man. Is she still pissed that I parked on her polymuca, you know, those flowers? It was dark. Man, don't remind him, dummy. But I have a job that badly needs doing, and it needs doing before 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. You'd have to leave right now to make it back in time. Yes, sir. Anything, sir. 
if the two of you do this job for free and you don't screw up, all is forgiven. Oh, thank God. Yes. Fair warning. It's not going to be easy. No, we don't care. We'll do it. Sounds like that mouse made his way back into your pocket, son. Sorry, I'll do it. Me too. Tiger walked over to his desk, opened a drawer, and pulled out a wrapped-up package roughly the size of a hardbound dictionary. You need to drive this package up to Rape Hole, West Virginia. <laughs> Rape Hole? For real? <laughs> That's a little on point, ain't it? <laughs> I didn't name the place. Pay attention. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Drive up to Rape Hole, West Virginia. Tiger glared at Buster and Carl, who were fighting to keep straight faces. And give it to the man at this address. Tiger placed a business card on top of the packet. He'll have a package for you. Take it and get it back here before 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. I'll be here all night, so as soon as you hit town, you bring it here. Got it? Absolutely. Piece of cake, sir. You haven't heard the best part. That part of West Virginia is the subject of the largest manhunt in 40 years. They've cornered that serial killer meat eater within a 112-mile radius. They've got every road, trail, and river blocked off. They're searching every car going in and out, especially out, which means you can't take your guns or anything else suspicious that makes them take a closer look at you. Oh, crap. Well, what if they look inside this package or, you know, the one we're bringing back? Should that unfortunate turn of events come to pass, son, I'm going to put together a model ship inside your bowels while you're still alive. Got it. We're on this, sir. If you two screw-ups fail this time, there's nowhere on God's green earth you'll be able to hide from me. This is your last chance back into my good graces. We're on this, sir. Thanks for giving us a second chance. Carl and Buster jumped up and rushed towards the door. Carl's hand was on the doorknob when he felt Tiger's glare. Carl went back to the desk and sheepishly grabbed the package and the card with the address. Hey, uh, almost forgot. Whoa! This is really heavy. What's in this? You better never find out. Outside, Buster snatched two of Lila's cookies. Yoink! Told you we'd be back out. I cannot believe he gave you two idiots another chance. You really need to stop flirting with us, baby. It's embarrassing. Just try not to crap the bed for once, huh? Us? Never. <laughs> they stopped by Carl's place to drop off their guns and anything else illegal they had on them. Oh, crap! Carl's ex-wife's car was already in the driveway. His two daughters, Brandy and Jana, were tossing a sock monkey back and forth on his lawn while his ex-wife, Lori, glared. Dude, this ain't the day you got the kids, is it? This bet not be the day you got the damn kids. Yeah, yeah, just chill. I'll get rid of them. I ain't going to no Venus flytrap for your ass. I ain't doing it. You know, what if you took this job yourself? By myself? With no guns? Yeah. You know the kind of people Tiger deals with? And they live in West Virginia too? Man, hell no, nah, I ain't going up there by myself. Uh, that's a good point. All right, I'll get rid of them. They got out of the car. Hi, Daddy. I've been looking for this all month. I've missed you so much, Daddy. We're leaving with Mommy tomorrow at noon on that month-long trip, so this is our last chance to see you for a really long time. Yeah! Thanks for making so much time for us. Especially when we know how busy you are all the time. Thanks so much, Daddy. I love you so much. As the two girls looked up at Carl, their faces shining with optimistic love, Buster buried his own face in his hands. Oh, crap. Ten minutes later, Carl and Buster were speeding towards the highway, with Jana and Brandy in the back seat. So, a road trip, huh? Yeah, this is going to be awesome. I don't know. Isn't West Virginia where they marry their dogs or something? No, honey, nothing sick like that. They just marry their siblings. Hey, maybe we'll get to see them catch the meat eater. Oh, you heard about that, huh? Who hasn't? It's been all over news. There's already been 14 lawsuits filed out how thoroughly they searched every car going in and out. Really? Just lovely. Yeah, about that. We still need to figure that one out. Maybe we can just use them to our advantage. A teddy bear, maybe? 
Hey, I'm not stuffing this package up a teddy bear's ass and giving him to one of my daughters. I'm getting a teddy bear? Yay! Why, yes you are, honey. We're stopping to get one in a couple of minutes. What about me? I'm a little too old for a teddy bear. I'm sure they'll have something emo for you. I'm not emo, I'm Chav. What's Chav? That's British for douchebag, and your sister isn't one. She's pulling your leg. They arrived at the toy store a few minutes later. Okay, we need something that we can hide the package in that the cops either won't suspect or won't touch. Ooh, let's get a creepy doll. Nobody likes those. I don't know. This bug doll looks pretty cool to me. Bug is a stupid name for a doll. Look, a doll won't work anyway. Not enough ass to hide the package. (laughs) Buster grinned at this and opened his mouth. You make one joke in front of my girls about the size of ass required to hide your package, and I will choke you out. Look, man. I hate when people know me too well. I got it. The package is the size of a large, hardbound novel, right? Right. So take one of these Swoon by Nina Malkin dust jackets and wrap it around the package. No adult will go near that crap. Genius. Good idea. It looks awful. Let's use this. Cool. Thanks, girls. We want a cut, though. Yeah, you know, actually, we're doing this gig for free, so we don't get a cut. So we'll cut you in on us surviving, all right? Oh, man. What a ripoff. Later, the girls were sleeping in the back when the car passed the West Virginia state line. Both their heads popped up at the same time. Daddy? I just feel a horrible chill. It woke me up out of the dead asleep. Yeah, there's been a great disturbance in the forest. Well, we did just pass the state line into West Virginia. I'm scared, Daddy. Uh, We're all scared, honey. Yeah, buddy. Later. No! But I'm starving. Well, we can find someplace else. No, look, I'm starving now. We are not eating at a place called Purdy Mouth Diner, and that's it. Look, I checked the GPS, and the only other place around for the next two hours is a Hardee's. Yeah. Okay, fine. Good point. Birdie Mountain Diner it is. And if we don't like the looks of the place or if the menu sucks, we can always leave. Cool. They reached it a few minutes later and went inside. Hi there, I'm Cletus. Welcome to the Purdy Mouth Diner. Our special today are squirrel chili and mixed varmint meat salad. Okay, let's bounce. Hey, let's at least look at a menu first. You folks want a table or a trowel? Mmm, we'll go with the table. Right this way. Look, Daddy, that man's cleaning his teeth with a straight razor. Look, Daddy, that man's wearing a fur coat. No, he's not, honey. He's just shirtless. Can you two angels do me a favor and stop pointing out all the interesting, unique things that people here are doing? Okay? Thanks. I'm really feeling very perturbed, Carl. Let's bounce. Hey, l- look, let's at least look at the menu, okay? Here you folks go. Can I start you off with some crawdad grits or floating applesauce? Um, I'm not even sure I want the answer to this, but my morbid curiosity has reared its ugly head right now. Just what the ever-living hell is floating applesauce? It's applesauce floating in the pool of pig grease. I knew I shouldn't have asked. No problem. Here are your menus. Cletus handed over four menus, the covers of which featured a screaming pig being stuffed into a flaming oven by a grinning, heavily bearded chef. Ooh. Daddy, what's pig lip surprise? And what's cricket stuffed hamster? Okay, yeah, let's bounce. They got to their feet. Yeans leaving already? Yeans? According to the English West Virginia Dictionary I was reading in the car, That's short for you people. Hmm, you know, we changed our minds. We're going to hit the road. Oh, I see. You're too good for us, huh? Everyone else in the diner, each one of them more horrifying than the last, looked around at these words. You look down upon us, huh? Think you're better than us? Nah, nah, it ain't even like that, man. You take one look at our menu and you're too good to eat with us, huh? The other patrons, all 30 of them, started glaring at each other and getting to their feet. Oh, crap. Man, flip the script, Carl. Now. <laughs> okay, look, you know, now that our little joke is over, bring us some of that crawdad apple uh, sauce stuff and we'll figure out the entrees, okay? 
Buster, Carl, Jana, and Brandy hurriedly found their seats again and retreated behind their menus. Okay. I'll be back with Dean's order in a minute. Cletus headed for the kitchen, and the other patrons, while still glaring, at least sat back down. Carl? Yep. I hate you. Yeah, I can get behind that sentiment right now. A few minutes later, Cletus brought out a metal plate, which was so bent and nicked up it looked like it had been through a war, and it was brimming over with buttery crawdad grits. Man, that looks awesome. I tell you, buddy, it's going to fill me right up. Plus, I had a big breakfast, so you can get their order. I'm good with this fine dish, bro. Uh-huh. So what'll it be? I have a question. Yeah? Um, what exactly is red that caviar? That's what Yeen Zankies call potted meat. In that case, I'll order last. I can't decide between the pokeweed salad and the possum pie. You know, I think I'll have the frog gig soup. Nice choice. That comes with the complimentary miniature frog gig. Sweet! And I'll have the chili pie. What kind of meat? Squirrel, badger, or varmint surprise? Um, whichever... Mm, whichever of the three is the least rancid. Okay, I'll check on that. Have you decided, miss? Uh, yeah, I've decided to try your toes pigyon with the varmint gravy. Excellent choice. Oh, um, hold the tail on the gravy, please. You sure? That's the best part. I'm quite sure, thanks. No problem, I'll put all y'all's orders in. When he was gone, Carl leaned forward. Are any of you good at faking a heart attack? Won't work. There's a doctor over there in the corner. Where? I don't see him. Right there. Where? Behind Buddy Epson's mummified corpse? No, man, that's not Buddy Epson's mummified corpse. That's the doctor. See, you got the stethoscope? Oh, yeah. Fine. I guess we'll be eating this crap. But I don't want to. None of us do, honey. But Daddy doesn't want to get burned at the stake by an angry mob again, okay? I guess. Back in the car, even after their pit stop to throw up and brush their teeth with Drano, nobody would speak to Carl for an hour. Look, I've apologized, okay? What else do I have to do? My Christmas better be awesome. Birthdays, too. Yeah, promised. Okay, fine. And what about me? I can still taste that squirrel souffle he gave us for dessert. Dude, I thought we agreed only to exchange cards at Christmas and birthdays. Yeah, we did. So from now on, you take the fatter or fuglier girls at the bars 100% of the time. 100%? Dude. I can still hear the impromptu jam session with banjos that broke out in the table next to us. Fine. 100%. Oh, look! Cops! Now there's a phrase that always wakes me up. Ah, it's the manhunt blockade. Okay, kids, remember what Daddy does for a living? Personal trainer. Very good, girls. And how many guns does Daddy own? None. Fifty. Oh, I mean none. Okay, has Daddy ever drowned a man in a punch bowl in front of you? Nope. Not unless I flash back to what you made us eat for lunch. You're not funny. Okay, no more rehearsal time. We're in line. Carl pulled to a stop behind two other cars, the first of which was undergoing a full search. Damn, they ain't playing around, man. And this is cars coming into the area. Can't wait to see what they do to cars trying to get out. Uh, One problem at a time, bro. Daddy, why are the cops beating that man with their sticks? Uh, Well, they found a gun in his car, honey. Wow. His blood's flowing like clown tears. What did I tell you about reading Stephen King, honey? Sorry. Damn, I ain't seen an ass whooping like that since somebody cut in front of Tiger 10 minutes before the McDonald's breakfast cutoff deadline. Oh, yeah. I wonder if they ever found that dude's lips. Probably ended up in a McRib. The officers dragged the driver's unconscious body out of the way, tossed it on top of a stack of other semi-conscious bodies, and rolled the car out of line. Carl and the car in front of him moved up one spot. The cops began searching the car in front. Aw, oh, crap. Now what? Remember how Tiger had us to cut off Fat Tony's middle finger? Yeah, so... Did I ever actually give it to Tiger? Man, I don't know. Hold up, wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that you still got the finger in your pocket from three days ago? Yeah, I think so. Well, I haven't changed jackets since then. Hmm, Daddy? Not now, honey. We're talking shop, all right? Just close your ears like I taught you so they can't make you testify. 
Okay. You know what? When they find that finger in your pocket, don't, don't check your pocket now, man. If they see you checking your pocket, you're going to look all suspect. Sorry. You know what? When they find that finger in your pocket, they're going to beat us to within an inch of our lives. Yep. The car in front was done and pulled away. Carl moved forward. Each of the four mountains of flesh passing as police officers waiting for them looked big enough to eat Ray Lewis. Uh, hi, officers. Step out of the car. Put your hands up and your pants down. Uh, Certainly, uh, but legally you're not allowed to search my underage daughters. That's what I'm for. Carl looked around. The speaker wasn't more than 12 years old, but was four feet wide, heavily freckled, and missing half her teeth. She wore a tiny version of the state trooper's uniform. Line up, ladies. Let's make this snappy. Come on, toots, faster. (laughs) Meanwhile, the adult guards were frisking Carl and Buster. FYI, bro, you ain't finding your serial killer up my ass. No, but you might be bringing in something he can use to escape. Up my ass. Are you sassing me? Absolutely not, sir. When the searches were done, the officers started in on the car. I never got into their base with a dude before. Is that only how far yours got? Mine got to fifth base. That girl had man hands. And yak breath. Oh, so you didn't have the finger? I guess not. They didn't find it anyway. Man, it's about time something went right. That's what I was going to tell you. You know how you've been trying to teach me how to pick pockets? I ripped the finger from your jacket pocket when I hugged you this morning. When I realized what it was, I was going to slip it back in the next time I hugged you, so you never know it was gone. Where is it now? Um, I sort of just tossed it on the floor in front of my seat. The four of them turned in unison as one of the officers opened the door on Jana's side and started to stick his snout inside to search that part of the car. Oh, crap! Jana bit her lip. Buster judged the distance to the edge of the road and the thousand-foot cliff beyond, and Carl stood there, paralyzed. Be ready to move, Jana. Brandy threw herself upon the ground and started thrashing about like a girl possessed. Give us time! Let the girl die! I am no one! I am no one! Fear the priest! Fear the priest! Marin! Marin! What in the tarnation? All the officers flocked to the girl. As soon as their focus was on Brandy, Jana darted out of line, ran to the open door, bent in, scooped up the finger, and raced back to her place in line. Diamonds on the sills of my shoes. Oh, it's just a little light possession. She'll walk it off. (laughs) Happens to me every time I catch five minutes of American Idol. The horror! Spiders! Spiders! Yeah, let's get back to it. Brandy thrashed and ranted for a little longer, tapered off, then got up and rejoined the others in line. Thanks, Pumpkin. Stop bringing your work home, Daddy. Sure thing, honey. All right, you're all set, folks. i see a priest about your baby girl soon, okay? Sure thing, officer. Carl drove away. Well, that went well. I can feel your glare, Buster. Here's your finger back, Daddy. Ew! Honey, you didn't... What choice did I have? No, you had a lot of choices. You have pockets. They'd already searched us. No, I mean, what choice did I have to get the taste of Purdy Mouth Diner out of my mouth? Throwing up and brushing my teeth didn't help. Hmm, good point. That's a great point. Let me get a hit of that finger next. I got dibs after him. An hour later, they were nearing the last turnoff for the address Tiger had given them. Daddy, did that sign just say Rape Hole, West Virginia? No way. Uh, I think it was a misprint. On an official town sign? Well, this is West Virginia. Good point. Hmm, MapQuest says to turn right here. That can't be right. That's just a grass road. Man, it's MapQuest. MapQuest is stupid. Even I know that. I would use MapQuest to wipe my butt. All right, pipe down, girls. Look, I'm just not going for it. Let's hit that gas station up ahead and ask them to make sure. Really? We're going to go with one of your plans again? On this trip? I don't think so. Map quest. 
You'd rather go down an unmarked, unlit grass driveway in rural West Virginia where there's not even a mailbox? Damn, good point. Gas station it is. Carl parked and they got out. Six steps into the gas station, they realized the clerk and all three patrons were bound, gagged, and stacked up beside the counter. On second thought, they spun around to see the infamous serial killer, Meat Eater, blocking the door. He was bigger than a Mack truck and was holding a machete bigger than a Buick. Oh. Crap. Carl? Yep. You know that thing you do where because you're a raging dumbass, you always put me in life-threatening situations? Yeah? Stop! Sure thing, buddy. Get on the floor! Sir, have you been saved by Jesus Christ? See, we're from the watchtower. A minute later, they were pulling away from the gas station. He was very rude in giving us the bum brush out of there. Let's just take yes for an answer and bounce. I still think we should stop somewhere and ask about this grass road. Carl, if you do anything but take us hell down that grass road right now, I will beat you to death with your own damn steering wheel. I'll help hold you down. Yeah. Fine, whatever. They turned down the grass road. A hundred feet in, they were surrounded by dark woods. Hey, that's not helpful. (laughs) Another hundred feet, and they reached a run-down log cabin. Okay, you girls stay in the car. What, so Chud can get us while you're in there? Sweetheart, Chud only lives in urban environments. We better bring them. They've saved our bacon a couple of times already, and we need all the help we can get. Fine, but don't touch anything in there, okay? And no talking. And if Daddy has to gut someone like a fish, you remember what to do? Stop, drop, and roll. No, stupid. That's if you're on fire. We pull out our Gallagher raincoat. Good girl. Come on, let's do this. They advanced to the porch and knocked on the door. Cletus, from the Purdy Mouth Diner, answered. Yep. Cletus? Yep. How'd you beat us back here? We came straight from the diner. What diner? (laughs) The Purdy Mouth Diner, where you work. I don't work at no diner. Man, what are you talking about? We just saw you a couple of hours ago. Weren't me. What are you talking about? He looked just like you. Weren't me. But it also sounded just like you. You sounded exactly the same. Weren't me. You smelled the same, too. A combination of back sweat, possum pie, and moonshine. Weren't me. Yeah, but wait, you just answered to the name Cletus. Because that's my name. So, your name is Cletus. And you look, sound, and smell like another dude named Cletus who works less than 100 miles away from here. Something about that confusing you. Okay, whatever. We've got a package for you from Tiger. I don't see no package. Oh, yeah. Hey, let me go get it. Carl rushed back to the car. Cletus peered at the two girls. Why'd you bring kids with you on a job like this? Carl and I are not what you call razor-sharp professionals. In fact, I'd characterize them as butter knife dull professionals. But we still professionals. Only in the sense that Mickey Mouse is a professional sorcerer's apprentice. Yeah, not very professional to bring kids, you know. Hold up. Ma! Ma! Ask you to keep the cat out of the cocaine! Do I have to do everything around here? It's like I was saying, not professional. Yeah, I get that. Carl was back. Here you go. Okay, be right back with that package of yours. Ma! Where's Tiger's package? Where? Cool, thanks. Carl, Buster, Jana, and Brandy looked at each other. I didn't hear her answer, did you? Nope. Girls, what have I told you about letting deliverances answer to Norman Bates wallow in their insanity and peace? You said let them. Exactly. It's always best. Cletus was back, holding out what looked like a toothpick with a little bit of toilet paper stuck to one end. Here you go. The hell is this? This is the return package. It's ain't no damn package. It's a toothpick with some toilet paper on it. No, it's not. It's a flag. See? Carl, Brandy, Jana, and Buster leaned closer and squinted their eyes. Cletus was holding the world's tiniest pirate flag. I made it for him special, for one of his model ships. Aw, cute. Thanks. You want to come inside and check out some more of my flags? Yeah, no chance in hell. We got to roll. Thanks, though. 
Carl yoinked the flag from Cletus's hand. Back in the car, Buster took the flag. I'll be holding on to this puppy if it's all the same. It'd be nice to survive tomorrow morning, after the night we've had. Ah, one less thing for me to worry about. Daddy? Yes, sweetie? Is there anybody in the entire state of West Virginia who's not totally creepy? I doubt it. I'm just glad we didn't walk into him putting a dress on a pig or something. A couple hours later, they reached the police checkpoint again. Should we wake Buster for this? Buster was sleeping with his head against the window, the victim of a gas station turkey sandwich. Nah, he's too cute when he's in a turkey coma. Yeah, he is. Aww. As they advanced a car length, Carl suddenly sat up. Oh, crap. Now what? Uh, I never really got rid of that finger. Oh, crap. Now we have to wake Buster. Why? So he can say, what? You mean to tell me that after all the drama at the last blockade, you never threw away that goddamn finger? Really? Really? That's what you're telling me? We don't need that. That's not helpful. What are we going to do, though? It's no problem. I'll just hold it in my mouth like you did last time. What happens when they ask you questions? I'll tell them I'm mute. Tell them? With sign language? Daddy, your charades suck. I was beating you at that game when I was still in diapers. No time to argue. It's our turn. Carl pulled the finger out of his jacket pocket and shoved it into his mouth. Why, hello again. You guys finish your business here so quickly? Uh, uh, yeah. Just a quick visit to the pork line city and, uh, yeah, we're just heading home. Why does it sound like you have something in your mouth? It doesn't. Step out of the car and open your mouth. Now. All of them got out of the car. Buster moving like a zombie due to his turkey coma. The child officer glared at Jana and Brandy. Well, 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 we meet again, toots. Oh, crap. Aw, man. Open your mouth. Ah, no problem, officer. You're clean. Well, as far as contraband, anyway. Smells like you ate a purty mouth diner, though. Guilty as charged. (laughs) Buster was glaring suspiciously as they got back in their car, but Carl kept a mask of innocence on his face. Unfortunately, the girls were more than happy to fill Buster in. I can feel your glare, Buster. How did you pull that off? I swallowed it. Ew! Hey, no worries. I'll pull over in a sec and throw it back up. Like hell you will. With all the time we've wasted screwing around, we've got four hours of some change left to make Tiger's deadline. And it's a four-hour drive from here. We're not stopping for nothing if we want to survive tomorrow morning. Nothing. Fine, whatever. They arrived back at Tiger's office without further incident and with five minutes to spare. All right, wait in the car, girls. Here's my cell phone. Now, if we don't come out or if you see a man larger than Cleveland carrying out a bunch of garbage bags, call your mommy, okay? We know the drill, Daddy. Can't you work for a guy who doesn't make you feel like you have to give us the speech every time you see him? Not as long as Daddy's such a colossal screw-up, girls. Come on. See you in a few minutes, girls. Bye, Daddy. We'll sing at your funeral. Thanks. Outside the car, Buster smiled back at the girls. Fun, girls. Irrevocably warped, but fun. Yeah, I'm pretty fond of them. (sighs) Two minutes early. Damn it. I should have taken the under. (laughs) When have we ever screwed up a job? Once, last February, and that was because you were both in bed with a clap. Yeah, is Tiger in? Of course. Go on back. Can I have another cookie? Can you outrun my Glock? Damn. Never mind. Boys, made it by a minute. Ah, oh, it was a piece of cake. You know I love a nice, quiet, relaxing drive. That's nice. Do you have my package? Sure do. It's right here. Where is it? As Buster frantically patted all of his pockets, Carl straightened. Oh, yeah. You know, I borrowed it from your pocket while you were napping during the final stretch. What? Why? I had a little pigeon gristle stuck between my teeth. Hey, hold up. I've got it here somewhere. You used my handmade special order pirate flag to clean your teeth? Well, you know, if it had been anything other than pigeon gristle, sir. I... Ah, here it is. 
Carl wiped it on the seat of his pants and handed the pirate flag over. Tiger inspected it grimly for a long second, then relaxed. <laughs> it looks fine. Sir, may I ask? We've actually got a pig in Purdy Mouth's diner chance in getting out of here, and you want to extend this by asking him questions? Shut the hell up. Uh, sorry, nothing. No? Come on. I'm feeling generous. Ask me anything. Why so much urgency to get this pirate flag? Honestly, just in case you guys failed, I wanted to have time to clean up the mess and still make the McDonald's breakfast cutoff. Huh. But good work, boys. You get to live. Woohoo! Yeah. Okay, well, see you next job. Thanks, Mr. Tiger, sir. Carl and Buster turned to leave. Oh, yeah. Almost forgot. You boys never gave me Fat Tony's middle finger. I want it for my collection. So, let's have it. Carl and Buster looked at each other. Oh, crap. Uh, does it matter how digested it is? This has been Road Trip by Shadow Dog Productions. Starring John Fouts, Nathaniel J. Brown, Emily Fouts, Tara Nicole Azarian, Nick Azarian, Jen Azarian, Johnny Gardner, Ellie Dusek, and Lindsay Kilgore. Copyright 2012. So, a road trip? Yeah! Huh? Wait, I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> I was excited. <laughs> I know. I'm not. Just I gotta. Away. I gotta get my huh in. It's just so exciting. You can't wait. I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks, Lila. See you in a couple minutes. Mm, maybe. That was awesome. That was right. smooth. <laughs> yeah, that was, I'm that talking was. about right there. <laughs> this shit done. <laughs> All right, let's do it again. <laughs> she had the, had the sexy the southern voice. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lana. <laughs> she was smooth. Good job, Mom. I'm not bad. I just talk that way. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, be right back with that package of yours. Ma, where's Tiger's package? Look at your ass. Where? Look at your ass. Cool. Thanks. Look, I'm not just going for it. Let's uh, look. Let's hit that gas station up the road and ask them to make sure. Really? <coughs> you finish sneezing. <laughs> Bless you. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. Continue. Okay. Good deal. Hey, pipe down, girls. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Carl. Yep. You know that thing you do where because you're a raging dumbass you. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. You boys never gave me Fat Tony's middle finger. I want it for my collection, so let's have it. Oh, crap. Uh, does it matter how digested it is? I like how you went Kool-Aid man with that over yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they take away your man. Shut crying. up. <laughs> That's the sign when you deliver the letter. <laughs> Let's do that one more time when I stop laughing.